So it is another day in the shop. And we finally have the clocking ring for the transfer case. So we found a company in Canada. They're out on British Columbia on an island. And they made a super nice steel clocking ring that's gonna turn this exactly where we need it. We're gonna get some gasket maker down on this, get our new gasket. I feel like this is an arts and crafts project. Welcome to Arts and Crafts with Hillbilly. So we'll get this one glued down and then we'll show you guys the clocking ring. It's all made out of steel. It's machined really nice. Comes with new studs, some countersink bolts. Better than what we could have done. Yeah. Oh, give us some credit. We don't have the right equipment. I was going to say, if we had the right equipment, we right could Right equipment do to do that stuff. Let's bring that clocking ring over. We'll show you the new ring. So this is how precise this ring is machined. Watch. Literally so precise. That's where it's got to go. Um, we're going to use, we're using a good gasket that Hillbilly has. Then we're going to use a Felpro one. This other one's just a little bit thicker. So we're going to put that actually on the transfer case side. This one, wherever we put the studs, will go out here. And we're going to use the greatest stuff ever invented, red Loctite on all of the bolts. Is there other colors of Loctite? Yeah, blue, blue. and green. What's the difference? Yeah, we just want this to never ever come out. Red, you have to have, pretty much have to have heat, heat. to get it out. Yep. The other ones you don't. Yep, so when Hillbilly needs to pull this. Hillbilly can heat it up. He can use this torch. So the so. rumor is you hate Fords. <sighs> How did they find out? <laughs> How did they find out he wasn't such a wise man? <laughs> so here's the thing about Fords. It's mainly just fun to bicker with Hillbilly about Ford versus Chevy. I currently own a Ford F550. I had a 17 Ford F350 Platinum. Have a Loved that truck. 92 F350. And I absolutely have fallen in love with that thing. That's the wrecker. Okay. So I am not a Ford hater. It just gets you to comment. My apologies. In the end, we all hate electric vehicles. Yeah, that's true. That's not true. Well, that's not true because we would... Do you want to know why we would buy a we would buy a Tesla for our child? And here's why: for your child, but not for yourself. No, but listen, you can put parental controls on a Tesla. Like you can probably you drive a speed limit. You can put speed yeah. controls. You can do a geo a geo fence. Like GPS. And you probably stuff. could drive it from your GPS, phone. Yeah. Well, and so for a 16 year old kid that doesn't listen, that doesn't sound all terrible. That likes to speed. Is also very smart with electronics, so he'd find a way to disable all that. Yeah, you're probably right. That's why you get him a little Geo Metro or a Ford. Uh... Hillbilly likes his Geo Metro. So I'll get these cranked down real quick. And then you can see we have four holes. So I'm gonna figure out which hole my studs need to go into so that this will clock correctly. And yes, we've gotten beaten up about the lower cross member and oh, it's so low, it's all this, it's all that. Guess what, ground clearance. You only clear as much as your front axle will clear. After this transfer case and the steering, it should do everything we ask it to. And then some. And hopefully then some. It's gonna be the backup to the wrecker. Right there. We're gonna go in the number two slot back from here. Oh, almost forget. <laughs> Gotta get the Loctite. Uh-oh, I think you have enough silicone. It's busted through the paper. <laughs> oh, good. That means it's gonna seal real nice. It's bulged. <laughs> you would've tightened it tighter. I'm not as strong as you. Are you trying to lock tight the gasket too? I think so. Basically, this is never coming off. All right, so we got the outer gasket on. I'm not gonna gasket maker this one because Hillbilly just looked and the transfer case has a sill. So we wanted to make sure that nothing comes out of the transfer case. So that's why we gasket maker that because we did drill a hole. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Whoa, did, we go, did I go in the wrong hole? Yeah, you did. I marked them. <laughs> I seriously, I did. I marked them. All right, I screwed up. No way. Yeah, I marked them. I test fitted this off a of camera to make sure I wouldn't look like an idiot. Where did you mark that? Right there. Dude, I'm telling you, there's a mark right there. There's a mark right there. That's what I pulled the bolt out of. All right, this is weird. Something weird's happening. Maybe we should have marked all of them. Oh, good. They come right out. But yeah, the Loctite hasn't had yet. time to cure. 
I think I, I think I bolted the clocking ring up wrong. But how? Story of my life. You know why we do things right? We do it 12 times. We just realized something. When we test fitted this, we didn't put all six bolts in. We should have. Yeah, we should have. So this only fits in one spot. And that is right where I had it. Right here. This is not a symmetrical bolt pattern. So all six bolts fit here. So what we have to do now is what we did last night. Retest fit it. We need to retest fit it. So we're gonna get this bolted back down and then we have to figure out where exactly we're gonna put our pins. We had it, we had it perfect too. Loctite takes time to dry, so don't worry. No, we went the wrong way. How do we get it to go up? Which this bottom bolt here is in the right spot on my side. Yeah, but it's not even on the shank. Oh, it's not? <laughs> no. <laughs> in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. But now we have a game plan on what to do, kids. Don't do as we do. All right, we're gonna get this figured out. We're not gonna bore you with pulling it off again, but I'm gonna move this ring one last time. I figured out where we need to be. That's where our studs need to be in order for us to make this work. So I wanna mark that. That's right there, studs. Studs. Well, what if you welded this, grinded it flat, and then drilled a hole and tapped it? Why would we, we do that? We are not doing that. We just spent 200 <laughs> bucks on a ring that in theory should work. So we're gonna move this sucker. I'm gonna mess with this and show you in a minute what we come up with. All right, 11 times later, we got the transfer case clocked in the correct position. With all bolts. With all the bolts, with everything. We're gonna get these studs all tightened up. Yeah, yeah. That literally only took us like 25 tries. You will never believe it. The transfer case is officially done. Five and a half hours later. Actually, that wasn't count until we get drive lines. Then we could test it forward and backwards. Once we get back from lunch, we're gonna work on drive shafts and then figuring out the radiator. That's the big dilemma. It's figuring out a radiator, but we think we have a solution. If we absolutely had to, yes, we could move the winch, we could extend the frame, but we're trying to avoid doing that. We're gonna make this work one way or another. So anyway, we're gonna run to lunch. We'll be right back. This is the drive shaft we had built for the rear. That's the new drive shaft we're gonna use because we think it'll fit. Hillbilly thinks that this drive shaft is gonna be the correct length that he needs with the new drivetrain. So he's taking apart this. So this is a balanced drive shaft. I think that that one's balanced too. But anyway, we're trying to see, I think he's considering cutting this off, but I think it's too big a tube. It's three inch, it's two and a half. That's not gonna work. So basically his only option is to take that drive shaft and install it until he can get new drive shafts. This spline is bigger than that one. So he tried slipping it in. That ain't gonna work. All right, so we might be getting somewhere with the rear drive shaft. See if that's it. All right, so this has a flat flange style yoke on it. So we're gonna try to pull the yoke off of that, the yoke out of here, and we're gonna see if they're the same splines. Because if this was the flat, if this flat flange will go onto that transfer case, then we can bolt that drive shaft up, shorten it if we need to, and it'll work. You come hold this with your grubby hands. Careful of that right there. Ready? Uh huh. No Much way. smaller. No, no way. Nope. Which we kind of figured it wasn't going to be it. We get to beat apart some drive shafts. So, in order to get this here, we got to take this whole thing apart to get this U joint out, that U joint out without destroying everything. Wish us luck. Okay, take it. All right, so we are getting this U-joint dug out. We already disassembled the other one. This is a dang good U-joint too. It only has, what, one run on it? Two runs on it? Yeah. So I already took the other, the donor drive shaft apart, and we took this piece out. So this is what we are changing from this to this. So it should work. Keep our fingers crossed. Yep. So we just took some roller bearings out and we put new bearings in here because there were a couple broken ones. So now this should go down inside of there just fine. So we've destroyed this. It's officially useless. <laughs> yeah, because we don't know. We're not drive shaft experts, but you know what? For the dumpster fire, it's just fine. Is that the Brock Star's new name? Yeah. 
dumpster fire. <laughs> Negative. So we're gonna try to get us a conversion joint that'll go from this to whatever, what year was this Bronco? 86. So we're gonna look up the U-joint for an 86 Bronco and we're gonna figure out what this U-joint is. And we're gonna try to get a hybrid. All right, so I just did some Googling and I figured out that I needed a 1310 by 1330 conversion U-joint. So what that means is it's different. I went and got it and what do you know? Fits like an oversized glove. This u joint's just a little bit different than my old one, so I gotta make it work. I wanna try to get this together, and then we're cleaning the shop up, so that'll be it for the day. We've got Glocks University here tomorrow, where we're gonna have some awesome fans here hanging out with us and learning some cool stuff. We've got the shop all pulled apart. That's what's up. Look at that. Boom! Installed! I don't know how expertly, but that is installed. It's not ruined. I'm gonna hurry and throw a little bit of grease on it. Then this will be able to be bolted up in there and see how much length we need to take off of this. That's plenty of grease. It's brand new, so it doesn't need a whole ton. But I wanted to grease it before we install it because you can't blow the caps out. It's being held in with these keepers. 1310 by 1330 conversion joint installed. We used the original out of the full size Bronco. I think it's a Cardine joint. It's not a it's not a constant velocity. I know there's an actual real name for it. Got the yoke all installed. Now I'm gonna grab the drive shaft. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that goes right on. We got lucky. All right, so I figured out the U joints that I need. In this front drive shaft, I need a 1330. It's the same, it's just a 1330 U-joint, but on the front, I need a 1330 by 1350 conversion U-joint. The spline is a 1330, and the front axle, the front axle yoke is a 1350. What that is, is it's the same width as a 1330, but it has a bigger cap, so it's got 1350 caps on it. There's a 1330 cap, and that's 1350 on bottom. It's just a little bit bigger. We got that coming from Napa, but our problem now is we need to extend this drive shaft by three and a quarter inches. So what we're gonna do is, this is two and three quarter inch tubing. We're gonna have to find us another drive shaft that's that is two and three quarter and cut it out of it, cut that, retube it, and then we'll have us a front drive, a front drive shaft. So we got the rear that needs to be shortened. We got the front that needs to be lengthened. So we got a shop to clean up because we have Gloss University. So I will be back tomorrow. All right, so thank you all for coming out to the Gloss University. We had like 10 people show up. That was the maximum amount of people we wanted in the class. So if you didn't get into the class and you wanted to, we are gonna do it again. I think the class was a huge success. If you guys went, make sure you drop a comment. Let us know what you thought about it. If you loved it, hated it. We had Davey P, we had Matt, we had Jason Kilmer, all of the best of the best, showing the basics in washing, showing the basics in buffing, ceramic coating, everything. And thank you Avalon King for sending us out the ceramic coating kits. Every single person that attended went home with a ceramic coating kit. We showed a hands-on demo of how to apply it, how to put the sealer on it. And I think everybody got some good value. So thank you guys again. We're gonna try to do some more cool classes next year where we bring people in and just teach you guys stuff. So it was super fun. I enjoyed it. Anyway, but we're getting back on this little Bronco right behind me. So over the weekend, Hillbilly was able to go and find a new drive shaft. We're gonna be chopping it up. It's two and three quarters tube. Went and got it from his dad. So I'm gonna cut the ends off of this drive shaft that we need to extend. And we're gonna cut that up and use the tube out of it to make a new drive shaft. May not be balanced, but eh, it's gonna work just fine for what we need. Doesn't need to be balanced as long as it's centered. He's not wrong. So we're gonna center it the best we can. I've built drive lines for derby cars for years. Uh, I don't have a lathe, but I'm gonna show you guys with the grinder and with the chop saw. By the end of the day, the goal is to have this thing driving. It might just be driving forward and back, but that's the goal. So we need two rear, we need two drive shafts, the rear and the front. We already have the transfer case in, we're gonna get fluid in it. What I do when you don't have a lathe to chuck these up, you can either roll it in your chop saw, which I don't recommend because it can kick on you, or you cut your weld with this. So I just wanna tap it. I'm starting to break the weld. So I'm gonna keep just working it. Is this the correct way? Eh, it's the correct way for the Bronx Star. I got advice. What's your advice? Why don't we just take the grinder 
cut a slit right there to spread it open. Oh, we could, but it's just, it's coming. Here we go. So as you can see, I mean, I cut down it a little bit, but now we have a good solid cap to work with. And what we'll do is that's got weld. So we're gonna grind that weld back. So we have a good, about a quarter inch gap so we can penetrate the weld down in, weld to this, weld to the tube. But see, that is just a tight fitting sucker. Okay, so we'll get the other side cut off and then we'll work on the tube. So we've got the caps out of the drive shaft. We've got this and this. We need to figure out the U-joints that we're gonna put in. So Hillbilly just fit the one side of the U-joint. It'll go into the front axle so we know that that's correct. That's this wider side, but we got the wrong conversion joint because this is too narrow. It's not quite long enough. So we've got to figure out exactly what we need. We'll take this one back to Napa. And then we also, we got another U-joint that is correct. Somebody's installed this and it's missing a roller bearing. So this is going back to Napa and we're gonna get the correct one. But that is wide enough. It's the right caps. Okay, so I have to take the shifter out and right here on the bottom bend, I have to heat it up and bend it a little bit sharper because I have my lower gears, but it won't go into the higher, uh, the my upper set of gears because it's hitting the dash. So I'm taping everything up out of the way because I have to get a torch to bend it because if you cold bend it, you're taking a really high chance of cracking this and I don't want to crack it. All right, so this is the tube that we cut out. I'm going to go with, it's just where the welds are cut. It's just shy of 23. So I've got to add three and three quarters of an inch. So it's going to put this at 26 and three quarters of an inch. We've got this new tube over here. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to measure it out 26 and three quarter. And we're going to retube this drive shaft. What, 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 what are you doing, Hillbilly? I am putting in the sharper arch onto the drive shaft. Oh, and by the way, to whoever the fan was that sent Hillbilly a really mean meme and had our secretary hang it above his toolbox, I'm gonna show you this, but I'm not gonna show you what the meme is because it's, it's real mean, but it's really funny. I got such a kick out of it. Thank you, Bill. It says, driving Fords will change a man. <laughs> and it's, it's super funny. Hillbilly doesn't think it's funny, but it got hung up and we all laughed about it. Look at it. A bee? Yeah. Let it walk on your tongue. Why would I do that? That is not a bee. Let it walk on your tongue. That's a wasp. What are you trying to do? Let it survive? I don't know why it's being all docile and... It's ready to sting. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's there. Wow, it has really good feet. Come on, sweetheart. Okay, we're friends now. No, no, no. Let me swat it. No, I'm gonna put him on your shoulder. Let me swat it. All right, back to work. Try to sting the air. Oh yeah, I like that. Doesn't hit the dash, but it has all the gears now. All right, so I'm gonna tack this end cap so that it doesn't move when I go to beat that side in. So that's right where I want it. Now, this is gonna get pounded into the tube so that it's just like this and it's square and everything's good. For the transmission so we can get it mounted securely to not just free floating. Transmission mount. Go. One more. One more. Right there. That ain't coming out. It's probably you don't even have to weld it. It's how tight that is. Well, we might have to adjust it. So we'll probably have to bang it a little, get it out. Slightly off. <laughs> It's front, so it's the front drive shaft. I don't think it being off a little bit's gonna. Nah, we'll fix it. Just grab a pipe wrench. We've got it pressed in. Now we gotta clock it. That's how much it's off. So this was super, super pressed in tight. I think what I'm gonna do is cut this weld and clock it that way. Cause that one went right in. This one was a, a bugger. Hillbilly did beat the cap out of the end. 
which we can either put it back in or leave it out. It won't matter. I mean, I guess we have to pull the U-joint out anyway, so yeah. might as well. I'm gonna get this weld cut, clock it, tack it all together, weld it, put U-joints in it. I've got this clocked now. What that means is that my U-joints are gonna be on the same plane. So if you look at this one, it's flat. And this was a professional built drive shaft. See that? Very, 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 very minor amounts of movement. Not professional built. No movement. <laughs> About almost none, like the other. So I'm gonna tack this. I might try to dig this out a little bit so I can get a little bit more of a penetrating weld in there. We're gonna be driving this forward in reverse before we know it. All right, I've got it all welded out. I'm gonna pull the clips out. We're gonna start beating some U-joints out and get this drive shaft finished. It is broken. Sometimes old U-joints get wedged in. Got it. Coming right up. Oh. Okay. Got it. That's ready for the new U-joint. This one didn't want to be in there. So this is just gonna hang right there. Just like that. Bada bing. But it got you dirty. Got little bearing marks on her shirt. Okay. That one is in. All right, I got my 1330 to 1350 U-joint conversion joint in the front. But the rear, it's just a 1330 square and straight. We're gonna see if this thing fits in the transfer case in the front end. Oh, fudge. Getting the U-bolt strap started. I don't have a wrench, so hopefully it stays up here until I can get that. But this U-joint is working so far, so I must have measured it correctly. That's lucky. It's perfect. Pretty perfect. All right, the front drive shaft is in and done. So I'm gonna pull the rear one out. Well, I'm gonna get a measurement, pull the rear one out, and then we're gonna chop that one down, make it fit. Hillbilly's working on his computer system. We just ordered a new water pump. So Hillbilly did some independent research and found that a 92 to 94 Mustang water pump is shorter by like three inches. So we're just gonna pull this water pump off, see if we can get a radiator in, and then tomorrow, which will be in a different day, different video, we'll be able to put that on. Told me to hang this water pump off. He has a picture of what, Maynardo sent him a picture of a water pump. So he had me, he's having me pull this water pump off just to see if it is going to be shorter like we need it. There's the pulley. Now I'll work on the water pump. So we want this spline shaft to be two inches. I'm gonna go with that's at about a half an inch. So we're gonna shorten this drive shaft by an inch and a half. That's it? Yeah. That's it, that's all. We only need it an inch and a half shorter. You gotta make sure these things are good because with this thing, it needs all the help it can get. All right, so this drive shaft needs to be shortened an inch and a half. This is the one that we already changed the U-joint and we changed that inner panel thingy that to fit. So we are Mickey Mouse and everything, but you know what? Would you expect anything different for the Bronx Star? I think I got all the bolts out. Oh yes, yes I did. Since that hose has to be replaced, I'll cut it. And there's the water pump. I got a little carried away and I was able to get this out before Camry could film it. So you didn't get to see the, the awesomeness of it dropping on the ground and hit me on the foot. So I'm gonna grind this up, get this prepared. Oh, I need a new belt. We're gonna get this all ground. It's time to put the front tires back on. <laughs> tires are installed. Expert-like. Expertly installed. Now, in a perfect world, I'd be shipping these back to full torque and I'd get them shortened and I'd get them rebalanced. Hey, why don't we spell the dragline pull uh, balancing beads that balance itself out? Oh yeah. We can always send these in and get them balanced. That's not a huge deal.
boss doesn't think this is going to start, so we'll see what it does. I know it will. Wait. I know why. I done something you told me to do. What? You told me to remove everything off the front of the motor on the driver's side, and the coil is one of them. Oh, so now it's mine? Yep. So technically it didn't start. But here in about two seconds it will. It's alive! Again. All right, so I'm gonna get this pounded in. <laughs> now it moved. So we got it all welded. I'm just running a tap through these bolt holes because when I was putting a bolt in it, it got a little rough. So we don't want any mishaps when we put the drive shaft in, but we officially have the rear drive shaft shortened an inch and a half. It's ready to go in. It's fully welded. It's clocked. It's all of the things that it needs to be, except for installed. Checking all the fluids and filling the fluids that need to be filled. I know the transmission's empty because I drained it. Didn't re couldn't remember if I drained the transfer case or not. So I was just checking them, topping them off. Yeah, when you run a tap through this and get all the grease out of it, that's wonderful. See it? I think we should tap every single hole always. That's what I've been thinking. Because this goes right in. Because that's its home. It goes in its home. Then like it did brand new. Yep. Filling up the transmission. Not enough for him to go underneath and fill the transmission fluid, which is gear oil. So I got a hose going up to the floorboard and filling it that way. Look at that. We got our length correct now on the drive shaft because we have shortened it. I'm trying to cut this outer pulley off because I don't need it. We just need the inner two. And this is gonna make it to where our radiator doesn't fit in. So I've unbolted it and I'm working on cutting it. Uh -oh. I What'd you do? Just need to weld it up, grind it. Oopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> My bad. This is what I use on my LS. We just need to figure out the dimensions that it needs to be. And it probably, they probably both need to come out on the driver's side. And then where's your water pump? So this isn't gonna work. Darn it. So I'm gonna try to figure out the radiator that comes out as the outlet's on the driver's side. Driver top, we'll go to there. Driver bottom, we'll go to there. So should we see if it drives forward and backwards? Yep. All right, so our goal was to see if this will move forward and back on its own power. We've got all the fluid in it. We've got drive shafts in it. It does not have steering and it doesn't have cooling, but let's see if it'll move on its own power. This is a big milestone for the Bronx Star because for the last three months, it's been sitting outside in the back lot, just waiting to be blown to pieces. And instead of blowing it up or starting it on fire, we decided to get it to run and drive again. Big. It's a big moment. He'll build. Claire? Yep. I wouldn't say it was impressive or pretty or, or anything like that, but you know what? It did move on its own power. It runs really rich. My nose is burning. Oh, so you got to put bungs in it and O2 sensors? These fix didn't have O2 sensors either. I guess it's just, she, she just gonna run rich. So anyway, we'll measure out the radiator, get that figured out. We're still waiting on some steering. Once that stuff gets here, we'll be able to put the steering back together. So if we can get some steering, some sort of cooling system, so he's gotta fix his clutch. Anyway, we got a lot of stuff to do. All right, so we got quite a bit of stuff done. It at least drives forward and back. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoy this video, go check out this one.